Hey Stavros, we're back. This time we're moving on to our next part of our EV conversion. It's been a long time, the project's gone stale, mainly because I couldn't get a coupler sorted out. I took the gearbox apart of the leaf, which was this part that fits perfectly on the leaf motor, but I went to loads of engineering companies if they could do something with this and the clutch plate of the BMW gearbox only to come back no one was interested because this is hardened steel and nobody wants to touch it and it's a one-off custom part and blah 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 and Anyway, obviously you watched Damien Maguire's builds and with he did he's got a leaf project on the go or did have or will have or it's finished or whatever by the time this is done. And he showed you like with some simple basic parts, you could make your own coupler. And he showed you like with getting like a cylinder off a hydraulic rat and getting a two. But unfortunately I don't have a lathe or any engineering skills like that. <clears throat> yeah, I can do a bit of welding, but that's pretty much it, really. So, so, so what I decided to do was, I've got the two clutch plates for each of the motors. Let's just show you what's going on here. So I've got the two clutch plates, obviously, one for the car that came with the car, the BMW one, and people don't like using the Fiat ones and the Suzuki ones because there is a bit of play in them. I went ahead and bought both because I did actually get them cheap or a brand new. Just they were just the plates off eBay. I, so this is the the Fiat one. It it's okay. It goes on. There's slight movement there. That's okay. But in my mind, though, I bought the Suzuki one, the Suzuki Jeep clutch plate, and I think that's the plate is not. There is play in it, but it's not as bad as that. I think. So I went ahead and got used that one. I'll show you what I did. So I'm no computer CAD engineer. So I went on to Fusion, Fusion 360 and I modeled up a cylindrical basic cylinder. And what I did, I with the calip digital calipers, I measured the I measured the centers, the, the diameters of the um, bits that are going to go into the, the, the cylinder. And like what Damien did, he, if you make them, I made them 0 0.05 slightly smaller millimeters of a millimeter. And what I was going to do was heat it up with some gas burners and hopefully they'll drop in and you'll get a snug, perfect, centered fit. So I went ahead and measured up. I made the, the part. I went online and I put it to like, it goes online and engineers can quote for the part that you've put on. And I was getting prices of well over £200 for this basic cylinder with holes in it. It's a CNC type website. I mean, it doesn't need to be CNC. It just probably needs to be on a lathe, really. And I was getting the cheapest one came in at 150 And I thought maybe for 150 it was worth a punt. And then out of the blue, this chap came through £45 delivered. And I thought, well, for £45, if you mess it up, you've messed it up, haven't you? You can just get another one made. Unfortunately, I didn't take pictures of all the stuff because I've got the part. I'll show you the finished part in a minute. I've got the cylinder through that was machined out or laid. I don't know what it was done, but it looked good. I quickly checked it with my calipers. Everything was pretty much spot on. So I was going to do it myself and video it, the fitting of the clutch centers. But in my mind, I didn't want to fit them and half cock them and then they're going wonky and stay there and that'll be the end of them so I took a chance I went to work we've got some engineering shops in our workplace and the, one of the guys hydraulically the 10 ton hydraulic press he put he, he fitted the clutch plate centers into the machine part the cylinder part and then I went over to the different shop and a guy there there's some professional welders there i got the guy to weld it up so let's see what what, what the end result is Ta -da! so that's the end result 
quite a nice job what the guy's done with the welding and everyone. So thanks for that, everyone that helped. So there's probably, I've got the Suzuki, there's probably less than a hundred pounds there with the two plates and the metal. So the guy done a great job on the welding. He said that's not going anywhere and it's not going anywhere. So that's the Suzuki clutch center plate on there. So that's it. What the guy did say to me was that if, although these are machined perfectly center, if it was done in a lathe and the lathe isn't very good, the centers can be off from one side to the other. He said to me, I didn't realize that because this isn't machined right through. These are just machined about three centers, 30 millimeters into the metal. So the metal's pretty solid in the middle. The only plus side to doing that, it's giving me like a stop on the um, on the splines. I'll show you what I mean. Is that the right side? So if you can see that, that will go in and stop now. That's the BMW side, obviously. Obviously, that's perfect fit, that one. So if I need to adjust, I can cut the pilot part off the gearbox shaft. That's a very tight fit, that one. That's a nice fit on that one. It's a shame, the other one. And on the leaf side, I can do the same if really need be. I don't think that's quite machined in deep enough, that. but So this is the Suzuki part. This is the Suzuki clutch center on that. Yep, you can see there is, there is movement there. There is movement there. But that's probably not a bad thing in a way because if it is fractionally off center, what I did do, I set up the controller and I spun it up, but then it's hard to gauge really. I mean, when I was holding it, it was fine, but then you don't really know if that's slightly out, it's slightly out, isn't it? So that's, that's the link in my missing part now, the missing link. So back to what I'm gonna do next. Back with my original plan, which is, because you've got this massive overhang on the leaf motor, I mean, I suppose you could cut it off if you really wanted to. Okay, so my plan is use that half of the gearbox, bolt that back to the, the original motor, if I did a bit more homework in the part, in the outside width of this, I just made it big so there was something to weld to. But in hindsight now, if I was to do this again, I'd make it smaller so it slides inside. As you can see, that's pretty much the exact same size as the... It will go in, but that's not really good enough, is it? Yeah, if this was a few millimetres smaller, that would fit perfectly inside that and I wouldn't have to do anything. So what I'm going to have to do is cut this middle part out unfortunately I didn't want to start cutting that much out and what I'm also going to do is cut this down if you can see the outside of that it's like the shape of the motor there so what's going to happen is I'm going to probably cut it down there like that so the process will be I'm going to cut this out I think I'm going to cut this down then I can bolt this half of the gearbox to the original motor that will give me a perfectly flat side. I did measure this before. That'll obviously go in and stay there. Now I think once I measured all this, I'm not 100% that it does look like it stick out a lot, but then it does go in there. I think I'm. Um, this was measured and spaced out for a 20 mil aluminium plate. So that's my coupler. I think what I'm going to do next stage is cut that inside out to free the free that slice that down then we'll come back and see and then what I might do then is offer that into there and we can measure the gap then between the face plate of the gearbox to the face plate of the leaf motor gearbox and then I can buy the plate and then I can go on and make the adapter plate up. 
machine it round somehow. Cut it round with jigsaw. I don't want to go too thick because then you can work with it at home if it's not too thick. So this side's not going to be too crucial. I'm just going to make this fit on this side. I can use that as a, a template for the holes and the, the mountings. But the crucial part will be obviously then mounting. I can sit this on top of it loose. So let's get that done. Hopefully we'll get the plate. We can sit it on top and then we can spin it and then we can see if there's any wobble on the gearbox. That, I mean, if the gearbox is wobbling from side to side, then obviously that's off center and it's not going to work, is it? The clutch blinds. But it's a good bit of progress there. I'm happy with that. So we'll come back. Let's come back and when I've chopped this up and we'll offer them together and see how much we can measure the gap and maybe I might spin it up. If I can upend it, then... I can spin spin the motor with that on top of it. So let's get on. Mm -hmm. 